Thank God for those who are online and for those who are alive, alive. We thank God for those of you who are alive with us, and we thank God for those who are listening to the recording. Yes, we do thank God for those who are alive. It's so good to be alive and in the land of the living. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. The Bible says we're to cast all our burdens upon the Lord and he will sustain us so whatever burdens you're carrying we want you to cast them on the Lord and let the Lord sustain you not only this day but every day praise God in a few moments we're going to ask our friend Ryan Trogler in a few moments to read the scripture he's from Marysville Pennsylvania then we're going to ask uh, Jackie Fisher at, at a little bit later on uh, she's from Kentucky. She's going to read the scripture, and you might want to download now, everybody, or open your Bible to Luke 24, 1 through 12. Luke 24, 1 through 12. But I want to give a shout out to everybody. I think we have Zizla on from uh, Midlothian, Texas. If that is so, Zizla, come on and say hello to us. Hello, Pastor Carter, and good morning, and God a happy Easter to everyone. Yeah, that Jesus Christ is risen today, so I'm just so happy and full of joy. Hallelujah. So praise God, praise God. Praise God, and bless you and your family. Give our family, give your family our greetings, will you please? Um, blessings, blessings to everyone. Thank, thank you. Thank God, and thank you for your faithfulness and steadfastness. Continue to serve the Lord. Let's go up to uh, Kuna, Idaho. Praise God. Praise God. The Spirit of God is moving all over the nation. Up in Idaho, Christy Carpenter. Come on in, Christy, and say hello to us. Well, hello, Pastor Carter and everybody. How are you this morning? Wonderful. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. He's risen. What an awesome day we have all day long. Oh, I hope everybody is so happy and has a wonderful day. Praise God. There's no there's no use in anybody. There's no reason for anyone to be sad today, is there? Oh, heavens no. We should all be doing cart, cartwheels and backflips. Hallelujah. <laughs> Hallelujah. Backflips and cartwheels. Okay, this sounds like a plan. Praise God. Well, I physically can't do it, but I can imagine it. <laughs> yes, yeah, yeah. imagine it and rejoice in the Lord for this is the day that God has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Praise God. Bless you, Christy. Give our love to Aaron and all the family. I sure will. Praise God. Praise God. Let's go down into Tennessee and then greet Dustina and, and Michael and all the family there. Hey, Dustina. Good morning, Pastor. Good morning, church. I'm uh, praying that everyone has a blessed resurrection day today. Enjoy your time with the Lord and with your family and your loved ones. And just mask in the glory of that to know that he is risen, that he is alive, that we are going to meet him one day. And the way things are going, it's going to be very soon. So rejoice and be happy and praise the Lord every day. Praise God. Thank you, Dustina. We'll be talking with you later, okay? All right. God bless you. Right. Praise God. Praise God. Give our love to the kids and to your hubby. Praise the Lord. Okay, let's go up into uh, um, Pennsylvania. See my granddaughter's on. Kena. Joaquina, come on in and say hello. Just unmute your phone, star six, and say hello to us, would you please? Well, maybe we can get Keena to come on a little bit later on. I'm and looking for your dad to come on uh, uh, a little bit later on also. Uh, okay, what a wonderful day this is. I mean, there there is no reason why anyone ought to be sad on this day. This is, we call it Easter, but it's Resurrection Sunday. It's the day in which we celebrate Jesus rising from the dead, ladies and gentlemen rising from the dead no other person in history has ever raised himself up from the dead on his own power and praise god he said he would he said and after three days i'll raise this temple 
and he did it, and he is Lord of Lords, King of Kings. Death could not hold him. Death could try to hold him down. Death could not keep him. The grave could not hold him. We serve the resurrected Savior, Jesus Christ, and he is the answer to all the needs of mankind. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believes in him shall not perish, but shall have everlasting life. I want to say to you who are listening, and those uh, who are live with us, and those who are on the recording, Jesus is the answer. Put your trust in the Lord. No matter what's going on in your life, put your trust in the Lord and stay there. Stay there with him. Don't leave him. Don't back off from Jesus when things go bad. Uh, every, every believer must suffer persecution, but put your trust in the Lord. Ladies and gentlemen, these are the last days. These are the last days. And, 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 and Satan is pulling out all the stoppers, all the stoppers. He wants to try to uh, dissuade you and discourage you from serving the Lord. But make up your mind. You're going to stick with Jesus. I mean, to turn back means there is no heaven for you. Jesus said he will not have any pleasure in anyone who starts with him and turns back. Stick with the Lord. No matter what problems you're facing, no matter what kind of sickness, no matter what your, your issues are, you put your trust in the Lord Jesus and stay there in faith with him and watch what he will do. Our hearts go out today as we pray for the uh, families of those 207 people who were killed, murdered in Sri Lanka. Murdered, murdered by the Muslim terrorists. Murdered. Be Why? Because they hate Jesus. And so what do they do? Pick on some innocent people who are worshiping God in three different churches in, 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 in Sri Lanka. I mean, that's a, a, a religion that a lot of people follow. How can you follow the Islamic religion? How can you follow that religion and, and think you're right? That our, God, our God is the living God. We serve Jesus Christ, the risen Savior. Muhammad did not rise from the dead. Get it? Muhammad did not rise. Muhammad did not rise from the dead. Neither did uh, Baha'u'llah. Neither did anybody else. Jesus ro rose from the dead with all power in his hands. Jesus Christ, ladies and gentlemen, is the Son of the living God. Jesus Christ is God. Jesus is God. He is God. And when people begin to accept that, not begin, but when people accept that and say, that's it, I believe, ladies and gentlemen, eternal life belongs to you. And so we have this religion called Islam, and, and they, they back the terrorist movement, and they go around killing people, and, 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 and people who not, will not worship the way they want to, who will not worship their God, they call their God Allah, and, and they put the put to death Christians, and they hate Jesus, they say Jesus was not the Son of God, they're wrong, they're in error. And ladies and gentlemen, we must stand up for Jesus. Many of us might be persecuted, and so we pray for those 207 families where people have been murdered in three churches this morning in Sri Lanka. We pray for those who have been injured. Ladies and gentlemen, all over the world, uh, people are suffering in the name of Jesus. And so we're going to take a look today at, res we call it Resurrection Sunday. We're going to look at what happened when Jesus went into hell. And, and my subject today is going to be, actually I have two subjects, and the one might be a little bit rough, it might be kind of rough, but we're going to look on the rough side too. My, my subject is, uh, can a dead man kick butt? My subject is, can a dead man kick butt? And for those of you, if that's too hard for you, too hard for you to swallow, then I'll make it a little bit easier. What happened when Jesus went into hell? Okay, so we have two subjects today. Can a dead man kick butt? Or uh, to make it easier on you, what happened when Jesus went into hell? We're going to ask Jackie Fisher if she would come on right now and read for us our scripture. And our scripture is found in Luke chapter 24, verses 1 through 12. Come on, Jackie. You can greet us and then read the scripture, would you please? Okay. Good morning, church. Good morning, Pastor Carter. Good morning. 
Everyone have a happy Resurrection Day. This is Luke 24, 1 through 12, the Resurrection of Jesus. Now upon the first day of the week, very early in the morning, they came unto the sepulcher, bringing the spices which they had prepared, and searched with them. And they found the stone rolled away from the sepulcher. And they entered in and found not the body of the Lord Jesus. And it came to pass, as they were much perplexed thereabout, behold, two men do or say them. So whatever, whatever. Please uh, mute your phone. Right, mute whatever. your phone. Just caller, just whatever. coming whatever. in. Mute your phone, you. please. Star just six. Call me a bitch. Okay, we we'll you whatever. Like and it came to pass, as they were much perplexed so. thereabout, okay. behold. Two men stood by them in shining garments, and as they were afraid, and bowed down their faces to the earth, they said unto them, Why seek ye the living among the dead? He is not here, but is risen. Remember how he spake unto you when he was yet in Galilee, saying, The Son of Man must be delivered into the hands of sinful men, and be crucified, and the third day rise again. And they remembered his words and returned from the sepulcher and told all these things unto the eleven and to all the rest. It was Mary Magdalene and Joanna and Mary, the mother of James, and other women that were with them, which told these things unto the apostles. And their words seemed to them as idle tales, and they believed them not. Then arose Peter and ran unto the sepulcher, and stooping down, he beheld the linen clothes laid by themselves and departed, wondering in himself at that which was come to pass. Praise God. Thank you. Thank you, Jackie Fisher, for reading the Word of God. Thank you for reading. She read Luke 24, uh, 1 to 12. You might want to read all of Luke later on today and um, finish the book of Luke in your reading. Uh, next Sunday, we're going to be looking at uh, when Jesus ascended into heaven. And so we're going to be looking at our, our message next week of uh, the Great Commission. What is the Great Commission and what is your role in it? So we thank God for Jackie Fisher. And now we're going to ask uh, our brother Ryan Trogler up in Marysville, Pennsylvania to lead us in prayer and pray with him, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, good morning again, Pastor. Good morning again, Hertz Air, and happy Resurrection Day to everybody. <clears throat> Heavenly Father, we want to thank you for dying on that cross and shedding your blood for all of our sins and for rising up out of that grave because the grave and, and like Pastor Bar said, death could not contain you. <clears throat> Excuse me. Lord, we just also want to uh, pray for the wisdom and knowledge for Pastor Carter so he can teach us your word again today. And Lord, we want to pray for all those people that were murdered down in Sri Lanka. Pray for the families. And just, just pray for all the pastors and all the church members and all the Christians across the world. And Pastor Paul and all of them. Lord, we just want to thank you for providing all of our needs and giving us our family and friends. And we just want to say we love you, praise you, glorify you. In Jesus Christ's precious name, amen. Amen, amen. Thank you, Ryan. Thank you, Ryan. And I want to thank all of you once again for joining us today in this powerful online church. And we praise God. You know, this the online church is a miracle. Now, just think about it. I thought about this this morning. Think about it. Ladies and gentlemen, the online church, you're in your home. You can be in your car. You can be in the park. You can be uh, walking down a, a mountain trail. And you can fellowship with other believers and worship the Lord God, uh, sing together, pray together, fellowship together, and hear a message that's going to encourage your, whole, your soul as the Holy Spirit speaks through his anointed servant, uh, whomever God call, chooses to preach the word, God speaks to you, and you hear the message, and people all over the world can receive the same message, the same anointing, uh, by way of the recording. Ladies and gentlemen, this is a miracle. The online church, it's nothing to take lightly, and, and uh, it's 
the online church is a part of the real church. We, we just reach out in a different way. We reach out over the airwaves, uh, through the Internet, by way of the cell phone. We, God has blessed the online church to reach in the areas where the brick-and-mortar church cannot go. And so as the brick-and-mortar church members fellowship together and worship together in their setting, and they lift up the Lord, that is very, very important and so wonderful. And so when you look at the online church uh, uh, in, in uh, communion with the, the brick-and-mortar church, we are all about doing the work of the Lord. You're going to see that even more in next week's message as we preach about the Great Commission and your role in it. And so we just thank God this is a miracle. Don't take it lightly. Ladies and gentlemen, there are people who can't even attend church. There are people who have no church in their area and cannot attend church, but they can uh, dial up a set of numbers on their cell phone and be right in the midst of, of a service where Ryan Trogler prays and Jackie Fisher reads the scripture and we're all fellowshipping where we're family. Like uh, Terry comes on from uh, uh, Colorado and, and Zizla from Texas and uh, Christy from Idaho and uh, Wes from New Jersey, Kena from Pennsylvania and so many others, Nathan and Dustina and Michael and their family, uh, Nikki and and uh, Destiny from, from Tennessee. The online church, ladies and gentlemen, is a way in which God is using to reach the world. Then, when you look at the bigger picture, we've got uh, friends in some of our nations, uh, our Back to Basics ministry churches in Africa, where they uh, uh, broadcast this to, to people, and even people in regions where they're worshiping under trees, ladies and gentlemen, are hearing the same word that you're hearing, and God is performing miracles. God is laying his hands on people and healing them of blindness and sickness and cancer and diseases. People are getting healed even as they read the word. How so? Because God is God, and God works where faith is. Wherever faith is, the Holy Spirit has a green light to go to work. And so please, do not take this time you're investing, uh, take it for granted. Uh, seek the Lord while he may be found. There are people all over this nation who are confused, ladies and gentlemen. There are people uh, who, 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 who are not getting what you're getting. You are so blessed. We thank God for what he's getting. There are some people, they don't get this kind of ministry because uh, some people choose to, to serve a Republican Jesus. Others choose to serve a, a Democrat Jesus. But we serve the risen Savior. I don't preach the Republican Jesus. I don't preach the Democrat Jesus. I don't get involved in this politics. There are people... they. Christians hate one another because of political parties. Ladies and gentlemen, that is straight from the pit of hell, and they need to repent. We preach Jesus Christ crucified, buried, resurrected from the dead, and so we celebrate. We have a right to celebrate the Lord Jesus Christ uh, this day and forevermore because he arose from the dead. He died on the cross for us and went into the grave and rose from the dead. Nobody else ever rose from the dead on their own power. Jesus raised Lazarus, but that was the power of Jesus to raise Lazarus. But Jesus proclaimed himself to be the Son of God. He died for us. He had said before he died, I uh, destroy this temple, and three days later I will ri raise it up again, and he did. Now, all those haters, those haters, those haters, those Jesus haters, those Muslims, they're Muslims. They hate Jesus. They hate Jesus. I don't care whatever way you paint them. They hate Jesus Christ, and they deny that he is the son of the living God. And, and many are, and many back to terrorists, and those terrorists are killing people. And they kill people who proclaim Jesus. And ladies and gentlemen, don't be afraid. Do not be afraid of their terror. Greater is he in us than he that's in the world. And the scripture even says, if anyone 
will follow me. Jesus said, if anyone will follow me, they must suffer persecution. So if you're afraid to follow Jesus because you might have to suffer persecution, then uh, 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 you, you, may as well, you may as well just uh, repent. I suggest that you follow Jesus because if you go to the dark side and follow Islam, you're going to hell. To follow Islam means you're going to hell. To follow uh, the Buddhist religion means you have chosen to go to hell. I don't care how sophisticated, how sweet that thing might, might taste, it is a road to hell. There's only one way to go to heaven, ladies and gentlemen. Only one way, and we preach Christ Jesus, the Son of the living God, who gave his life on the cross and was buried, rose again from the dead. That's why we celebrate the Lord Jesus Christ. Ladies and gentlemen, I had some uh, friends in my old, old neighborhood in Chester, Pennsylvania, and uh, 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 I would I said to them, "Happy Easter!" And the one, the man said, "Oh, oh, oh, we don't we don't celebrate Easter. We don't celebrate. We don't we don't we don't we don't celebrate anything." Ladies and gentlemen, he was a Jehovah's Witness. Uh, he's a witnessing for Jehovah. He says, "But we'll not celebrate." the resurrection of Jesus, because the Jehovah's Witnesses do not believe that Jesus is the Son of God who died on the cross. So a lot of these people, ladies and gentlemen, they're putting on a religious act, and they've got a lot of people fooled. Ladies and gentlemen, wake up and praise God. Wake up and serve God. And then uh, we want to welcome David Carter from Dubai, all the way in Dubai. They serve the risen Savior, the resurrected Savior in Dubai. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. And so, ladies and gentlemen, uh, we want to talk today about, uh, we want to talk on the subject, and I've got two subjects. One, can a dead man kick butt? Can a dead man kick butt? Now, ladies and gentlemen, that might sound a little bit gross for you. So if you, hey, let me give you a softer, a softer uh, topic. Uh, 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 what happened when Jesus descended into hell? And after you find out what happened when Jesus descended into hell, you'll say, how can anybody ever want to serve Muhammad? How can anybody ever want to serve Buddha? How can anyone ever want to serve Shinto? How can anyone ever want to serve the Republican God or the Democratic God as they're doing in this nation? Ladies and gentlemen, uh, when we look at the real picture and look at the scripture, you see the reason why we all need to serve Jesus Christ, the living Savior, the resurrected God. Hallelujah. And get in on it. Get in on it. Every other, word, every other road will lead you to destruction. The Bible says there is a way that seemeth right to a man, but the end thereof leads to death. But straight and narrow is the way that leads to life. And so Jesus said, I am the way. Jesus said this, ladies and gentlemen, John 14, 6. It's in the Bible. I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man comes unto the Father but by me. So we're surrounded by all kinds of religions, all kinds of approaches to God. And ladies and gentlemen, the sad thing is they all think they have the way to God. But Jesus said in John 14, 6, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man comes unto the Father but by me. And when you come to God through Jesus Christ, that means you put away that hatred. You put away that murder, that violence, that racism. Ladies and gentlemen, if you are a true Christian, you're not going around hating people because they vote Republican. You're not going to go around hating people because they vote Democratic. Ladies and gentlemen, if you're a true believer, you're not even going to support a lying politician. Ladies and gentlemen, I, I must lay it out there the way it is. How can you be a Christian and support a liar? How can you be a Christian and support a a liar. I know that might make some of you mad. Well, bless God, get mad. I really don't care because if you support the truth, how can you support the lie? I mean, there is a there is a dichotomy there. Jesus said, "I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man comes unto the Father but by me." So how can you how can you support? How can your church support? A lying leader, a lying politician, whether he be the president or a congressman or a senator, how can you believe them? How can you support them? But yet we have half of the nation, over half of the nation, believing the lie. And then 
half of a nation believing uh, 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 what this uh, 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 political party says. Ladies and gentlemen, there's a time we need in this country we need to repent. I say repent, repent. Humble yourself before the Lord God. Get away from this nasty political thing and, 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 and open your eyes. Oh, God, please open the eyes of the people of this nation. And then when we go to other nations, oh, it's even worse in other nations. And so, ladies and gentlemen, we preach Christ Jesus, crucified, buried, risen again from the dead. We preach the truth of God's word. We preach from the Bible, not conjecture, not wives' tales, not political rhetoric, not some journalist spin on stuff. We don't preach what some uh, news network spins. We preach the unadulterated word of God, and it's the word of God that's going to get you to heaven. It's the word of God that's going to get you to heaven. Ladies and gentlemen, how can you support a hater? How can you support a hater and call yourself a Christian? The Bible says that if I regard iniquity in my heart, he won't even hear me. If I know that I hate somebody, if I know that I have a dislike for somebody, if I know that I have violence and anger in me, I have guile in me, if I have lying in me, deception in me, uh, how can God even hear me? He won't hear me. So it's time for people to wake up. It's time for people to get up, pull their heads out of the sand. It's time for people to hear the word of God. It's time for people to repent. Time is running out. Time is running out. And ladies and gentlemen, we've got so many people, especially in this millennial uh, generation. They think they can do anything they want and say anything. No, no, no. I'll contraire. And, and some uh, just blow God off. If, if I don't listen to him, don't pretend he's not around. I can live the life the way I want to. No, because the, the time is going to come when people are going to wish they had listened to the word of God and received Jesus and walked the way Jesus walked. So what happened when Jesus descended into hell? Or can a dead man... Can a dead man kick butt. Now I know that sounds kind of gross, kind of dead man, kick butt. But ladies and gentlemen, they crucified Jesus. He died on the cross. Joseph of Arimathea uh, secured his body, took it off the cross, wrapped it in grave clothes, and buried him in his own tomb, the tomb that Joseph had purchased and dug out for his own burial for the time when he died. And so Jesus was laid in the grave. The disciples, many of them ran into hiding. They split the scene. Uh, John, according to the, the what Jesus told John on the cross, here, take my mother Mary into your home and take care of her. John took Mary into his home and Mary adopted John as her son. And so the disciples went discouraged from Golgotha because Jesus was put to death. The hopes of many people were shattered. You see, many people thought that the Messiah was going to come, that he was going to uh, 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 kick the behinds of the uh, Roman soldiers, kick Ro the Roman soldiers out of the land, and establish a new government in Israel. But Jesus did not come to do that. He said, my kingdom is not of this world. He said, my kingdom is not of this world. He came to establish a kingdom that, that uh, uh, mankind still cannot comprehend. And all of man's intellect, they cannot comprehend the kingdom of the Lord Jesus Christ. It's a spiritual kingdom. It's a spiritual kingdom. And everyone who believes in Jesus by receiving him by faith in Jesus' name becomes a part of the kingdom of God. You and I are a part of of the kingdom of God. The moment we accepted the death, resurrection, and resurrection of Jesus Christ as our Savior, we became a part of the kingdom of God. And where does the kingdom of God exist? The kingdom lives in us. The kingdom of God lives inside of believers. So look here, when you see uh, uh, Muslims killing 
207 people in three churches in Sri Lanka because they do not worship Allah. Ladies and gentlemen, they can kill the body, but they cannot destroy the kingdom of God. Satan knows this, but what's he do? What's Satan do? Satan knows he's a loser. He's a defeated foe. We're going to look at how he got defeated in a moment. He knows he's a loser, and, and, uh, and so what's he do? He uses terror to try to keep people in fear, and he comes on an Easter morning, an Easter Sunday morning, and kills 207 people in three churches, and that's supposed to cause the church to stop worshiping Jesus. But devil, you're a liar, and the Lord rebuke you. And so we pray for the families of those who have died, and for those who are injured, we pray for their healing. But we keep on praising God. Ladies and gentlemen, we keep on praising God. No matter how many people die, no matter how many churches are burned down, no matter how many churches are burned in Georgia, the state where I live, no matter how many people are killed in California, we keep on praising the living God. No matter how many people, Elijah, who are killed in, in Kenya, and, 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 and you go in and out of Kenya, and you see the destruction. You've been, you've been uh, uh, confronted by the terrorists, but they cannot kill the kingdom of God. They cannot kill the kingdom of God. And so, ladies and gentlemen, let the kingdom of God rise up in you. And when every believer allows the kingdom of God to rise up in us, and we connect with our brothers and sisters, uh, when the ankle bone connects with the uh, leg bone, and the leg bone connects with the knee bone, the knee bone connects with the thigh bone, when we all, when the brick and mortar church connects with the online church and we join hands together and we worship God and preach the gospel, ladies and gentlemen, we can flip this world upside down. The Lord Jesus already did what he has to, had to do and he has left us here to enforce what he has won for us. It's up for us to enforce it. And so when we stop all this craziness, uh, I don't like you because you're a Republican. I don't like you because you're a Democrat. And I can't work with you because we're of two different political persuasions. We need to all repent because this madness is corrupt and it's leading, it's leading people to hell. It's leading church people to hell because a lot of church people are into that and, and their, their eyes are not on Jesus. They have made idols out of the president. They have made idols out of the senator so-and-so. They have made an idol out of, Repu out of representative so-and-so. We all need to repent and call upon the living God and worship him in spirit and in truth. Now, I know this is tight and it's right. I know it's tight and it's right. And I know there are some of you on there on listening. You are staunch Republicans. Some of you are staunch Democrats. But I'm a staunch Jesus person. I'm a staunch Jesus person. Nobody, see, that no Republican came to me in July 1969 when I was dying. No Republican could save me. No Democrat could come to me and save me. It was Jesus, ladies and gentlemen, who came all the way from heaven down and picked me up out of my wretched state and blew life in me, breathed life into me, and gave me the gift of salvation. That is why I pledge my allegiance to the Lord Jesus Christ, and no other God will I serve. I refuse to uh, uh, go over and cross over to the dark side. I refuse to go back, and, and no weapon formed against you and me shall prosper. So let's look at what happened when Joseph buried Jesus in the tomb. The scripture says that Joseph uh, laid Jesus in the tomb. He had wrapped him in grave clothes. He had anointed him and, and, and put uh, uh, grave clothes on him and, and, and rushed him into the tomb before the Sabbath set in. Before the Sabbath, because if, uh, if, if Jesus had, if they had waited until after the Sabbath begun, they could not bury him. So they gave him a quickie burial in Joseph's tomb and then Joseph had men roll a stone across the face of the tomb. Roll a stone. Uh, that's how they cover tombs, with a stone. And so Jesus lay in the, in the grave. The, the Bible says from the hours of 12 to 3 in the afternoon, darkness covered the earth. Lightning and thunder were, was all over the place. Earthquakes, tsunamis. I mean, I mean, all nature, all nature cried out when Jesus uh, uh, was put to death. 
even the Roman soldiers, as they saw the thunder and the lightning and the darkness and all the devastation going on on the earth around them, they said, even the soldiers who put him to death said, surely this man was the son of the living God. Surely he was the son of of the living God. Well, ladies and gentlemen, how come how come we can't recognize this? And we have seen miracle after miracle after miracle. You're a miracle. I'm a miracle. You're a walking miracle. We have our existence because of Jesus. And how can we even allow anyone to tell us anything other than what the Scripture says? Ladies and gentlemen, there's a need for repentance in this nation. There's a need for repentance all over the world. There's a need for all people to humble themselves, humble themselves, and call upon the name of the Lord. There's a need for us to stop believing Satan's lies. Ladies and gentlemen, we got to the place where many of us are so highly educated, we're so sophisticated, you know, we're grown up now, we're over 21, we can make our own decision, we can smoke reefer when we want, we can crack cocaine whenever we want, we can drink our liquor whenever we want, we can uh, go to bed with anybody we want because we're grown and we have free will, we have free will, that's what people throw in your face. But ladies and gentlemen, the Bible says the wages of sin is death. But the gift of God is eternal life. Ladies and gentlemen, there's coming a time when people will stand before the Lord and say, But Lord, but Lord, Lord, I built churches in Africa for you. I built churches in South America for you. I did fundraisers. I gave to this. I gave to, to, to heal cancer. I gave and I laid, Lord, Lord, I even helped my local church. I bought new pews for the church. I decorated the church. I cleaned up the church every Saturday. And the Lord's going to say, depart from me. I never knew you. Ladies and gentlemen, and when Jesus says that, there will be no other choice. You will not have any word to say that's going to convince or convict Jesus to let you into heaven. So the decisions you make now, the choices you make now, whether you live in Dubai or in Sri Lanka, whether you live in Russia or whether you live in Cuba, whether you live in the United States or whether you live in Kenya, the choices you make now while you're still living will make a determination of where you spend eternity. And it's time that people woke up and realized that hell is a real place. Because you've got people, you've got preachers preaching there is no hell, no place called hell. Got preachers believing there is no hell. And they're teaching people. And we got goofed up people sitting up in church. They believe anything these preachers say. Many preachers aren't even preaching from the Bible. Wake up, people. Wake up. Read the scripture for yourself. Call upon the name of the Lord. Wake up. Oh, God, open the eyes of the people. Stir the hearts of the people. Circumcise the foreskin of our hearts, God, that we might believe and call upon you and live for you. Praise God. Jackie Fisher read our scripture today, Luke 24 and uh, verses 1 to 12, where the ladies had gone to the grave to give Jesus a proper anointing and a proper burial because Joseph had given Jesus the rush burial, a rush burial, so he could get him in the grave before the uh, Passover began. And so an angel appeared to them. An angel appeared to them and, and said to them, He is risen. He is not here. Ladies and gentlemen, angels are messengers of God. And the angel of the Lord is not a liar. Because he brings the word of God. He said, I know who you're looking for. He's risen. He is not here. Why do you seek the living among the dead? And, and ladies and gentlemen, we've got people all over America, all over the nations, seeking the living among the dead. They're trying to seek the living in Congress. They're trying to seek the living in the White House. Ladies and gentlemen, unless you call upon the name of the Lord to direct your past, to direct your legislation, to direct your life, unless you seek the Lord, you're seeking the dead. And the dead cannot save you. That is why we preach this gospel. It's a living word, ladies and gentlemen. We're going to talk more about the gospel next week, but we preach the gospel, the living word. We give hope to mankind. 
it, hope was extended to us and we received it by faith. And now God has commissioned us to give hope to others. And so here's what happened when Jesus was in the grave. The world shook. The earth shook. Darkness covered the earth. Storms covered the earth. Satan had a, a party. I mean, they kicked it out. They kicked it out on the earth. They had a party. We put Jesus to death. That's the end of him. But all contraire, all contraire, as they say in French. They put his body to death. But you know, when, when, when God formed Adam and breathed his breath into Adam, Adam became a living soul, a spirit. When God breathed his breath into mankind, mankind became a living soul. And ladies and gentlemen, uh, uh, when we die, death is the door that separates the body, the physical body, from the spirit. The spirit, listen to this, learn this, teach others about this. The spirit that lives in you will never die. The life that comes into a person upon birth, that life will never die. The body will die. The body will die. The body will go to the grave. The body will, will suffer corruption and rot and, and disintegrate. But the soul, the Spirit of God, lives on. And so, so I've heard people say, well, after I die, that's it. Nothing matters after that. Au contraire. No, no, no. When you die, your body is dead. No more life in it. But your spirit, the you inside of you, the you inside of you, that you will live forever. But you have to make a choice while you're still alive. Where the you in you, meaning the spirit man in you, will live in heaven with God forever, or whether the spirit in you will go to hell and suffer eternal uh, damnation. Now, if you choose to disobey God and you, you blow God off, kiss him off as though he's a joke and never pay heed to his word and don't get saved, and you have this attitude that somebody taught you, some stupid person taught you uh, in a moment of stupidity, once you're dead, it's all over, nothing matters. There's going to be a wake-up call. Because if you choose to disobey God and not accept Jesus as Lord and Savior, then when you die, your spirit, your spirit, your spirit goes directly to hell in a spiritual body, in a spiritual body that is going to burn in a lake, in, burn in hell, first of all. The moment you, listen to this, the moment you die, if you re reject Jesus, or even if you turn back, because I know there's people, there are people on here who are listening. Yeah, well, I don't have to worry about that, Pastor Carter, because once saved, always saved. Au contraire. Why do you think the Scripture has in it any man having put his hand to the plow and looking back is not fit for the kingdom? There are so many Scriptures that warn us about backsliding, about sinning about taking this grace for granted. Romans 6 teaches us, what shall we say then? Shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? God forbid. And so get saved, ladies and gentlemen, and stay saved. Do not deny Jesus Christ. Don't let any idols in your life, don't let anything separate you from the love of God. And so Jesus went uh, uh, from the grave. His spirit, I was telling you about the the, uh, the, the, the spirit of the unsaved will have a, a spiritual body that will go into hell and that body will never be consumed. It, the fire, the flames will never burn that body up and you'll be in torment forever, ever, eons upon eons for eternity. If you don't believe me, read Luke 16 about Jesus' parable about the rich man in hell. 
He said, these flames are tormenting me. He said, send Lazarus with some water to give me some water. These flames are tormenting me. And so uh, that's one, one thing. That's what you want to avoid. What you do want is to, 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 to go into heaven the moment you die. Look at death as the door that leads to eternal life. To, Paul wrote, to be absent from the body is to be at home with the Lord. We're in a, believers, we're in a win-win situation. The moment we die, that's the moment our spirit enters into heaven. And then we await the resurrection, uh, uh, the, the, the second resurrection, where Jesus comes back for the church. It's called the rapture. And the, in the rapture, then all the dead in Christ will receive a new spiritual body, and their spirit that's around the throne of God now will enter into their spiritual body and their glorified body. It's called a glorified body. It's a body that we're to live in in heaven. And so, ladies and gentlemen, this thing is good. This thing is good. And preachers, preach it right. Preach it right. Preach it the way the Bible declares it. Now, when Jesus went into hell, ladies and gentlemen, according to Ephesians 4, 8, he led captivity captive. Wherefore, he saith, when he ascended on, on high, he led captivity captive and gave gifts unto men. But verse 9 says, now that he ascended, what is it but that he also descended first into the lower parts of the earth? So Ephesians chapter 4 verse 9 tells us what happened when Jesus died. They laid his body in the grave. His body was dead in the grave for three days. But Jesus' spirit was alive. His spirit was alive. And so his spirit went into hell, ladies and gentlemen. His spirit went into hell. The Bible even teaches us that he preached to the souls that were in hell that lived before the time of Noah and the flood. And so Jesus went into hell and he moved uh, upon hell. Ladies and gentlemen, now we must look at hell as being a place that has two compartments. Based on the, the scripture, in, in Luke 16, where Lazarus and the, 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 the rich man, the rich man and Lazarus are, we see the rich man in hell being consumed, being burned up by the flames, <coughs> and the flames will not consume him. Yet, that same rich man says, he begs, he begs, he begs God, send Lazarus with some water into this area. And, and Abraham says, uh, representing God, Abraham says, no, Lazarus, no, 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 uh, Dives, who, who was a rich man, no, he cannot come to you, and you cannot come to him, because there's a gulf affixed between us. There's a gulf, it's a place that no man can pass over. You cannot come to us, and we cannot come to you. So hell has two compartments, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, it had two compartments until Jesus rose from the dead. Let me explain. Before Jesus rose from the dead, there was a place called paradise in hell. That's when, when Jesus told the man on the cross, this day you'll be with me in paradise. That's where Jesus was going to take him, to that compartment in hell where the righteous dead awaited the resurrection. And then the other part of hell is the place where the unrighteous go. That's into the flames, ladies and gentlemen. The flames and the corruption and the crying and the screaming and people burning and never being burned up. Ladies and gentlemen, that's hell. That's hell. Now today, because Jesus rose from the dead, that righteous compartment of hell no longer exists because according to Ephesians chapter 4, verse 8, you're going to like this, he led captivity captive. In other words, Jesus led all of the righteous dead, Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, David, all those others, Noah. He led all of the Old Testament uh, righteous from that place in hell where the righteous resided, and they lived there until Jesus came into hell, and Jesus led them, captivity, captive, and they rose up with him 
uh, up into heaven where he presented them before his father, now there is no longer, listen carefully, there's no longer a place in hell for the righteous. So believers cannot go to hell, ladies and gentlemen. Believers cannot go to hell. Only unbelievers go to hell, and now hell is that place for the unrighteous dead where they are separated eternally, ladies and gentlemen, eternally separated from God. And so, uh, please, don't ever tell anybody, I wish you would go to hell. Don't ever wish hell on anybody. Tell them to avoid that place. Tell the church, there are people sitting up in church right now, playing church, playing, just having a good time, playing church. Have no, have, and, and because they join the church and they go to church, they think they're going to avoid hell. But unless you're born again, by the Spirit of God, you cannot enter into heaven. And so what, what, did, uh, what happened when Jesus went into hell? Uh, first of all, he released the captives. Not all the captives, those who are ungodly, those who are unri unrighteous, they are still in hell burning. But Jesus released the righteous captives who were in that portion of hell where the righteous dead awaited the resurrection. And when Jesus rose up from the dead, ladies and gentlemen, when Jesus rose up from the dead, he led those righteous captives up into heaven. The scripture says he even paraded them before God. And, 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 and God has established them in heaven where their spirits now await their resurrected bodies and they shall receive their resurrected bodies at the time of the rapture. Praise God. Praise God. I thank God for this teaching. Something else happened in hell. The Bible declares that Jesus shook the gates of hell. He shook the gates of hell. He rattled the gates of hell. In other words, he went into, in the spirit, he went into Satan's headquarters where Satan has his throne. And in the spirit, Jesus broke down the gates of hell, walked past the powers, principalities, ruler spirits, spiritual wickedness in high places, defeated all of them, and went up to Satan and took the keys back to the kingdom, the keys that Satan had stolen from Adam when he caused Adam to sin. Jesus stripped Satan of all his power stripped him, ladies and gentlemen, defeated him. And then Jesus, uh, after the third day, on the third day he rose from the dead in his physical body. Yes, the body that was laid in the tomb, ladies and gentlemen. It did not see corruption. It was in the tomb for three days. It did not see corruption. Remember when Jesus went to uh, deliver Lazarus from death, and Lazarus' sister said, but he stinks, Lord. He's been in the grave for four days. Well, ladies and gentlemen, Jesus did not stink. He did not see corruption. God promised him he would not suffer him to see corruption. His body did not disintegrate. And he rose up in his body. And then God... Uh, changed Jesus' body into a glorified body, the glorified body. His body was glorified. And Jesus, uh, uh, days later, was caught up in the cloud and he ascended into heaven. We're going to take that up next week. And so, ladies and gentlemen, we see uh, that Jesus descended into hell. But let's get, get, let's get to the butt-kicking business, Okay. I advertise on Facebook the question, can a dead man kick butt? Well, Jesus was dead in the grave. Everybody said, that's, that's it for him. We've gotten him. We've gotten that man who called himself the Son of God. We're finished with him. Satan had a party. I mean, they drank themselves. They got drunk. They had an orgy on earth. We got him. We got him. We got him. But Jesus in the Spirit walked into Satan's kingdom tore down the gates of Satan's kingdom, stripped the powers and principalities, the ruler spirits, all the demons. He beat them all up. And then he put a whooping on, on the devil. 
and they took the keys to the kingdom. And then when Jesus arose, he gave the keys to the kingdom to the church. Ladies and gentlemen, we have power. So you say, can a dead man kick butt? Yes, Jesus kicked butt. He kicked butt, ladies and gentlemen. His body was in the grave, but in the spirit he went into hell and defeated the devil. He kicked butt. And that is why the devil is so angry today. He's so angry. Oh, he's still, the devil still uh, has power. The devil still causes destruction. And he's still trying to cause the, the, the illusion that he has power. And he's still destroying churches. He's still bombing churches. He's still killing Christians. He's still uh, 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 putting people to death in China who own Bibles. But his time is about up, ladies and gentlemen. His time is about up. Jesus kicked butt, and every time, listen to this because this is going to help you. Every time you bind Satan or bind the demons or you resist the devil with the word of God, every time you tell Satan, devil, I bind you in the name of Jesus, by the authority of the name of Jesus and based on the blood of Jesus shed on Calvary, when you say that to the devil, you, you bring back to the devil's remembrance of the butt whooping that Jesus put on the devil in the devil's own turf in hell. And so, ladies and gentlemen, the Bible says, resist the devil and he shall flee from you. Well, how do you resist him? By the word of God. Every time you speak the word of God, when the devil hits you with sickness, you say the word of God. When the devil... Uh, Attack your loved ones. You pronounce the word of God. No matter what happens, the Bible says, trust in the Lord with all your heart and do not lean into your own understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge him. He shall direct your path. Every time the enemy comes upon you, because he's a defeated foe, he's defeated, ladies and gentlemen. His time is about up. You remind him of what Jesus did to him. Every time you plead the blood, you're reminding the devil of the whooping Jesus put on the devil. And I don't have time to tell you about the state that the devil was in when he got, was signed in to Hell's Hospital. Actually, he didn't sign himself in. They took him there. The demons took him there. Jesus put such a whooping on him. Uh, I'll, I'll describe a little bit about that next week. The whooping Jesus put on, on the devil. And, and what the devil saw uh, when, he, when, he, when he crawled out of hell's hospital and, 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 and went to Jerusalem, we'll take up that part of the story next week. Uh, uh, we're going to look at what happened uh, when, when, when the Holy Ghost fell upon the church and, 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 and just before uh, uh, when the Holy Spirit fell upon the upon the church and before the disciples began going into all the world we're going to look at the power that God has given unto you and me the power the power that when the church sticks together when we walk in one accord when we put away our own agendas and our own priorities and look at the priorities of Jesus whether we're the uh, brick and mortar church or the online church when we look at Jesus' priorities and obey the Lord and submit and surrender ourselves to him. Ladies and gentlemen, there is no telling what we can do in the name of Jesus. We serve a mighty God. We serve a risen Savior. Hallelujah. Yes, he kicks some butt. He kicks some butt in hell. Yes, and the devil's still hurting from it. The devil's still trembling at the butt kicking that Jesus put on him. Ladies and gentlemen, every time you read the Word, every time you read the Word of God, you're reminding the devil of what Jesus did to him. Every time you sing praises unto the Lord, you're reminding the devil he's a defeated foe. But most of all, you're reminding Jesus, I love you, Lord. I lift my voice unto you. I worship you. I praise you. You are the risen God. You're the living Savior. I worship you. You are the risen Savior. And so I say to you, happy resurrection day. He lives. He lives. He lives. He lives. And if you're listening today, wherever you are, and you can't get excited about this message, then uh, I'm sorry I can't help you. I'm not an entertainer. Uh, this is not Saturday Night Live. 
Uh, if God cannot entertain you with his own authority, his own power, his own Holy Spirit, if he can't entertain you uh, by the fact that Jesus gave his life for you and Jesus rose from the dead, he took his sin, your sins in the grave, and he rose up from the from the grave with no sin in him. He buried your sins. Our sins have been buried with the Lord. If that can't make you happy, then you've got a real problem. You need to repent. Seek the face of the Lord. Call on the name of the Lord. But don't give up. Call on me, God said, and I will answer you. I'll show you great and mighty things which thou knowest not. I pray that you and your family will walk in victory today. Hallelujah. I pray that you'll love the Lord with all your heart. I pray that you'll never stop uh, praising God. I pray that you'll never stop being a witness for Jesus. I pray uh, come hell or high water, no matter what the devil tries to put on us, we do not cave in. We do not quit because he lives. Somebody said, because he lives, I can face tomorrow. Christy Carpenter, you can face tomorrow. Dustina, you can face tomorrow. Zizla, because Jesus lives, you can face tomorrow. Hey, Wes, we can face tomorrow. Hey, David Carter, we can face tomorrow because he lives. Well, praise God. Lord God, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for your word. We thank you, Lord Jesus, that you are the word become flesh. We thank you that you offered yourself unto us, unto, unto God, to take away our sins. We thank you that you died, you were buried. On the third day you rose again from the dead with all power in your hands. We thank you that you stripped the devil of all his power. We thank you that you have given the authority to the church, the keys to the kingdom. Now, Lord, help us to walk in authority. And, Lord, if there's anyone listening, whether live or by the, by the recording, who has not received Jesus as Savior and Lord, and they want to be saved, help them, Lord, to ask you right now to save them, and we thank you, Lord, for saving them. We praise you, bless you, and honor you, Lord. Help us to be steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord, for as much as we know that our labor is not in vain in the Lord. In Jesus' name we pray and we thank you, Lord. Amen. Hey, brothers and sisters, walk together. Walk together. Walk in love. Let no corrupt communication come out of your mouth. Don't walk in hate or anger or bitterness or jealousy. Don't walk with racism in your heart. Love all of God's creation. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believes in him shall not perish, but shall have everlasting life. Well, we're going to uh, close out this recording. This recording is found on my YouTube channel, YouTube Leroy Carter where you'll find many of these wonderful messages archived.